Investing is an incredibly difficult thing to get into and understand when you're really just learning the ropes. So today I'm going to share with you five things investors don't tell you that I wish I'd known when I started my investing career. How's it going guys, Ryan here with another video and today we're talking about five things that experienced investors don't tell you and in particular these are things that I wish I had known at the start of my investing career. These are things that I would have found extremely beneficial when I was just learning the ropes. But before we get into that guys, please remember to like this video, it only takes one second, it helps me out so much and subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest content. And leave down in the comments section below what you wish you'd known at the start of your investing career and some other things that you've learned that would help new investors coming straight into this game. So without further ado guys, let's get straight into the video. So the first thing that I'd wish I'd known when I just started out my investing career. Now, this is a pretty interesting one and it's the fact that if you break even or make a small loss, you're doing really well for the first few years of your investing career. If you come out of your first two or three years and you're at break even, or you've only made a very small loss, or if you've made a small profit, you're doing extremely well. Investing is something that's incredibly hard to learn and you're going to have some big wins, you're gonna have some big losses, but at the forefront of that investing career that you're starting and you're learning, you're going to be making a lot more mistakes than when you mature, when you become a lot more experienced and educated and understand the market overall. So if you only experience a small loss or even break even, you're doing bloody well for yourself. So give yourself a pat on the back if you are, but I wish I'd known that. I've taken some heavy hits, I've been down significantly, many a time and if I had known that at the start that would have made me feel a bit better but I'm hoping that can actually motivate some people who have invested previously and they have made losses and maybe it's turned them off investing and realistically this is just something that comes part and parcel with investing or trading on the stock market you're going to make those losses but if you can minimize them as much as possible break even or even turn a profit in your first few years you're doing extremely well for yourself. The second tip that I wish I'd known that experienced investors don't tell you about is if you can't have a conversation with the CEO about the company, you shouldn't be investing in it. And effectively, this comes down to doing your research about the organizations that you're investing in long term. You should never be invested in a company that you don't understand or know what's coming up in the future or even understand the industry as a whole. If you're doing that, you're effectively gambling. So you don't want to be in a position where you're not able to understand the announcements coming coming out, understanding uh, the, the general activities of even the company themselves. So make sure you do your research before you make your investments. Make sure you can have a conversation with the CEO. You want to be at that position that you can ask him intelligent questions and have an intelligent conversation with him. Obviously, you're not going to know all the intricacies. If you do, props to you. But at the end of the day, you need to still have that base fundamental level understanding of the company before you invest in them, even if it's a hot sector, or even if you're just doing a medium term trade, still try and get an understanding so that even when announcements are coming out, you know if it's a good catalyst or a bad catalyst, for instance. Now, the third thing that I wish I'd known when I started investing is, you don't need a lot of money to make a lot of money. So you can start off with a very, very small investment and that can turn into something absolutely massive. What you're focusing on is investing on a value basis. If you get into a company early enough that is extremely profitable in the future, then you're going to make bags. And bags are effectively multiples of your re return on investment that you've put into that company. So for instance, you might invest five grand in a company that's only one cent. And then five years down the track, they are then a big multinational company worth over a dollar. You've made a significant amount of money with only a small investment. 
Obviously, you could have made more with a bigger investment, and obviously, it's a lot harder to make a lot more money with a smaller investment, but it is possible, and it comes down to, once again, that research and that patience. So you want to be able to understand the company and focus on those percentage gains and those value value investments as opposed to investing a lot of money in something you don't know about because not only does that carry risk, you might also have the issue of your money's tied up in those investments for a long period of time. So make sure you allocate your money wisely when you are investing. Now, the fifth thing that I wish I'd known when I start investing is don't try to time the market if you're investing long term. If you've found a company which you genuinely think is valuable, it doesn't really matter if it fluctuates one cent, two cent, three cent. If you're on it long term, you want to be focusing on the bigger picture. So make sure you're not just not getting an investment because it's had a a big run or something like that. If you're looking at a genuine long term investment, because at the end of the day, that big run, it might not pull back. There's always that possibility and you could potentially miss out on getting in on these shares. And at the end of the day, if we go back to that example of a share going from one cent to over a dollar, does it really matter that much if you got in at 0.9 of a cent or 1.1 cents or one cent? Not really in the grand scheme of things. So if you're investing long term, don't worry about price fluctuations in that sense. Don't try and time the market because that is when you will genuinely miss out on good opportunities. Now, that's not saying go and rush into any investment. Once again, do your research. Make sure you understand the companies before you invest in them. Now, the fifth and final thing that I wish I'd known from some more experienced investors is don't reveal all of your investments. Now, in particular, this comes down to more of having the emotional detachment from the shares that you're invested in. So if you're in something long-term, yeah, fair enough. You might tell a few people, you might be pretty vocal about what you've invested in. That's fine, it's long-term, you're letting that sit there. But if you're doing short-term trading, for instance, if you're wanting to get in something for the announcement, then you're gonna jump out, or if you're doing day trading, don't tell people what you're investing in because you'll form an emotional attachment to that, and it's going to affect your judgment when you're buying and selling a stock. So for instance, let me give you an example. Let's say you bought a stock at five cents. You've gone and told your mates, yeah, it's gonna hit six cents, seven cents, eight cents. You're gonna make 20, 30, 40, 50%, whatever. And then the stock tanks and it goes down to four cents. You don't want to lose face in front of your friends. So you're going to hold on to that stock and you're gonna say to them, yeah, no, nah, it's gonna go back up, that sort of thing. Don't fall into that trap. That is one of the worst things you can do. And that's why I say in particular, short-term catalyst type investing, don't get emotionally attached. And as a result, the best thing to do is not to tell anyone what you're invested in. This is critical in particular when you're day trading. And as always, nobody likes someone who is pumping stocks purely for a bit of profit as well. So it's kind of tacky if you're doing that thing on social media. If you want to talk about stocks, talk about the stocks that you're genuinely invested in long term. They're the ones you can share with people that if you're confident enough, they are genuinely going to be successful, share with them. But overall, it's probably a better idea not to even talk about stocks or suggesting that anyone should buy certain stocks in the first place. Allow people to make their own judgment and then effectively emotionally detach yourself from those investments. So that's all for today, guys. Remember to leave down in the comments section below any things you wish you'd known when you first started investing that would have been a big help for you guys. Please remember as well to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to keep up with all the latest content. And with that, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. See you next time. Cheers.